The three-year-old girl called the police. She was begging for help. When the police arrived, the officers were shocked by what they saw. Enjoy watching. Please support us with a like and subscribe to our channel. There are many new stories ahead. Alice woke up in the intensive care unit and could hardly remember her name. Her head was aching so badly, as if someone had split it into a thousand pieces and then hastily glued it back together. Alice touched her bandaged head and realized she almost could not move. Her body did not obey. How did she end up at the hospital? Abrupt visions flashed before her eyes and immediately disappeared. She remembered herself marrying a young man at the registry office. Then, she leaned over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. The doorbell rang persistently. She heard a piercing child's cry, a severe blow to the head, and she flew into the darkness. Someone suddenly opened the white door, which looked like the gates to heaven. A moment later, there was a loud female voice. Nikolai Ivanovich. She came to her senses. Hurry up. I'm coming, Tanya. I'm coming. The man answered and almost ran into the ward. Alice saw a man in a white coat leaning over her. Lucky you! My congratulations! The worst is over. Now you will get stronger with every single day. But the rehabilitation will take long, he said. Alice had to ask a lot, but her tongue turned to stone. She croaked barely audibly. Doctor, what happened to me? I cannot remember anything. They brought you here with a traumatic brain injury. You were in a coma and then had surgery with heavy anesthesia. No wonder the memory failed. It will gradually recover. Please don't worry, the doctor reassured her. Was the little girl with me too? Alice asked excitedly. Girl? No, she wasn't. Don't worry. You'll remember everything. You've already started. They will give you an injection to relieve pain. Get well. The doctor said goodbye. Nikolai Ivanovich's words soon began to come true. Alice remembered everything that happened to her year after year. She was a young, 18-year-old girl from the provinces who came to live in a big city. She went to college to become an architect and shared a dorm room with a classmate. A few years later, Sergei appeared in her life. They met on the street. It was raining heavily. The cold streams of water did not spare Alice's clothes and hair. The young man approached the girl and opened his large umbrella over her head. Beautiful stranger, may I protect you from the rain? My name is Sergei. What's yours? Alice. The girl answered timidly. She had never got acquainted on the street and was afraid of that unknown guy. Let's drop formalities. I invite you to a cafe to dry from the rain and drink some aromatic coffee. There's a place that serves magnificent coffee. Let's go, Sergei insisted. His good-natured smile was more convincing than the girl's fear, and Alice could not refuse the invitation. She nodded her head, smiling in response. After a short time, a casual acquaintance grew into a strong relationship. Sergei offered Alice to live together in a small panel-building apartment inherited from his grandmother. Elise agreed without hesitation. The apartment had one room and was tiny. It was perfect for an old lady, but not for a couple. Despite that, the young people felt comfortable together. Love made them blind to everyday problems. At the same time, Sergei boasted his parents had a large country house with a garden. It had two stores and was spacious and bright. There was enough room for everyone. He often repeated, my dear Alice, I will introduce you to them soon. My parents want to see you so much. I'm sure they'll like you. The girl felt a little uneasy. She never had her own home. Her parents died early and she lived with her grandmother until she left for the city. Soon the young people had their first big problem, an acute lack of money. Alice was still studying and not working. Sergei's salary was barely enough to cover utility costs. Even money for food was scarce. Sergei's parents helped them. He took their money out of desperation, but he didn't like it. He believed he should earn money and support his family himself. I'll find a good job soon. You'll see. We'll have everything, including the wedding and the child. Do you believe me? Sergei often repeated. Yes, honey, of course. In a year, I will graduate from college. I will look for a job too. I don't want to be a kept woman. Alice answered. One evening, as usual, Alice was fiddling with dinner. What to cook? All the products are gone again. And besides, the shoes are torn, and the money is almost zero. Why does it feel so hopeless? She sighed. She looked at the clock and realized Sergei should have arrived long ago. Where was he? Why didn't he call? Alice called herself. The subscriber is unavailable was the answer. The feeling of anxiety grew. 
Ali started walking around the room nervously, repeatedly casting a restless glance out the window. Finally, Alice heard the key turning in the door lock and hurried into the hallway. Sergei was standing at the doorway. He was glowing with happiness and holding a large package in his hands. Sergei, where have you been? You're not answering calls. I almost went crazy. I thought something happened to you, Alice said, barely holding back tears. Why are you worried, my dear? Everything is fine. My phone just died, and I forgot the charger at home. You better look at what I brought, Sergei said, putting the package in the kitchen. It was full of products, including expensive ones, which they could never buy, due to lack of money. That's not all, Sergei said to amazed Alice, and handed over several five thousandth bills. These are money for future expenses, and don't forget to buy new shoes. Alice looked dumbfounded at that splendor, and could not recover from what she saw. Sergei, where did you get so much money? Don't worry, I didn't rob the bank. I wanted to tell you right away, but I was afraid to jinx it. Two weeks ago, I got a job with a good salary. Today, I have received my first advance. Sergei answered proudly. Oh, I'm so happy for you. And where do you work? Well, this company. Sergei hesitated. In general, it buys and sells goods. It's now on the rise. But it's not your specialty at all. You're an engineer, Alice doubted. Well, an engineer, so what? Why do I need this profession if it does not generate income and we should survive from penny to penny? I want a better life for us, and I will achieve that. Sergei was full of determination. From that day on, money began to come in greater and greater quantities, but Sergei was always at work. Honey, are you coming? I've already cooked dinner, Alice tried to convince her boyfriend. Darling, you are so caring. You see, I have a vital issue today. I'll be late. Please don't wait for me. Go to bed, and tomorrow, I'll come early, Sergei promised every day. Closer to midnight, he came with a wad of money, tired but in a good mood. And the next day, it was all the same. A cold dinner, a late return home, and a significant amount of money on the card. Sergei, what's wrong with you? You promised me yesterday that you would come early, Alice asked. Well, Alice, good money is not easy to get. Be patient, honey. You know, I'll earn some extra money, and we can take a loan and buy an apartment. We'll get married. We'll have a baby. I know you dream about it, Sergei reassured Alice. Studies were the only thing that saved Alice. That year, she was graduating from college. On lonely evenings, when Sergei was away, she was plodding through textbooks. However, Unpleasant premonitions did not leave her for a minute. Well, where can you earn money in such quantities almost daily? Is it just, or maybe Sergei got involved with bandits? No, no, he couldn't. He's not like that. I know for sure. Alice immediately drove away those thoughts. Soon, there was the fateful day from which misfortunes began. One evening, Sergei did not come home. Alice was running around the apartment and could not calm down. Sergei's phone was unavailable. When the clock hands approached three in the morning, Alice called the police. Help! The man is missing. He left and never returned. When did he disappear? What were the circumstances? A stern male voice asked. Alice was worried and told about what had happened. Ah, and that's it. Very little time has passed. Maybe he stayed in a bar or somewhere else. If he doesn't show up by morning, come to the police. We'll see what's happened. The conversation immediately stopped after the short answer. An hour later, Alice heard the front door opening. She ran into the hallway. Sergei could barely stand on his feet. There were bruises on his face. His clothes were torn and dirty. There were traces of someone's shoes on his jacket. It was clear someone beat him. Sergei, what happened? Did someone beat you? We need to go to the hospital immediately and call the police, Alice wailed in fear. No, we don't need to go to the hospital and especially not to the police. I got into a fight and that's it. That's my fault, Sergei barely said. It was clear every word was hard for him. He moved his legs with titanic efforts. The next moment, he almost fell, barely managing to grab the door handle. With difficulty, the guy reached the bed and lay down. When Alice pulled off his outer wear, cold sweats covered her skin. There were wounds and bruises almost all over his body. Oh my god, Sergei, please. You better see a doctor. Let's visit at least a paid clinic, please, she begged. His young body was strong, and thank god there were no fractures. But IVs, bandages, and medical procedures at home continued for a whole month. After that, Sergei started going to work again, although the money became much less. 
However, he was coming home on time. It all seemed to be okay. Sergei, as always, was kind, caring, and loving. His eyes were smiling when looking at Alice, just like at the first meeting, but the girl felt it was a smile through tears. The guy was internally tense, trying with all his might to hide his worries. Alice intuitively realized that and repeatedly asked Sergei what was happening to him, but he stubbornly did not want to talk about that and only reassured her. Everything is fine, my sweet Alice. There are minor troubles in the company's work, but that's okay. These things happen. You'll see it all will be alright. Pass your exams and graduate from college. Please don't think about anything. In the future, Alice was blaming herself for not being able to find out what was in her husband's soul, for giving up and letting it slide. Her relatively calm life did not last long. One morning, on her way to college, Alice noticed a guy was following her. He was wearing a black cap pulled over half his face. He got on the same bus as Alice and went off at the same stop. She might think it was a coincidence, but... After leaving college, Alice saw the same guy again, and he continued pursuing her. When approaching her house, Alice looked back and, to her horror, saw the stranger again. Although she was not the timid type, she was too scared. Fortunately, two mothers with children came into her entrance. The girl quickened her pace and entered together with them. Alice was so frightened that her whole body trembled when she heard the sound of the front door opening in the evening. Sergei ran into the apartment. He was out of breath. Alice, are you okay? He exclaimed from the doorway. Yes, but one man was stalking me today. Alice was upset and told Sergei everything. He came up, hugged her, and said, holding her hands, Alice, you need to leave the city for a while. You will live with my parents in the country. I agreed with them. Sergei, why? What have you gotten yourself into? What happened? You've never told me anything, but I know you feel bad and have problems. Tell me, I beg you. Alice asked with tears in her eyes. Honey, I cannot tell you now. Yes, I have problems. I'll solve them shortly and come for you. Sergei did not want to be frank. What about college and exams? My god, I'm defending my thesis soon. Alice couldn't stop worrying. You'll have to take an academic leave. There is no other way. You cannot appear in the city yet, Sergei said. Sergei, please tell me what happened. No, dear, not now, Sergei repeated. Pack your stuff. You're leaving early tomorrow morning. Frustrated, Alice tried to concentrate and carefully pack her bag, but she couldn't do anything. She was nervous, and things were falling out of her hands. In the morning, after a sleepless night, Alice looked broken. Honey, don't worry, it will be okay. I will report about myself, Sergei said as Alice got into the taxi. Tears streamed down her face. It seemed to her she wouldn't see Sergei for an eternity. Or maybe? No, it was better not to think about it. If only Alice knew how much Sergei wanted to tell her everything, but he was afraid she would hate him when she realized what a terrible thing he had gotten himself into. In the worst times, when he and Alice lived almost from hand to mouth, he met his classmate Anton. The guy was wearing perfect clothes and holding a purse tightly stuffed with five thousandth bills. He said he was working for a real estate agency. Without words, it was clear he lived wonderfully. Well, and you, Sergei? What are you doing? Are you going to be poor for the rest of your life? Do you want to earn good money? Join our team, he suggested to Sergei. Buying and selling apartments, right? Is that legal? He asked. Oh yes, of course, but you'll understand everything when you start working, Anton answered meaningfully. Sergei had no idea what he'd gotten himself into. Yeah, it was a real estate agency, but the realtors working in it were scammers. They scammed lonely pensioners and drunkards. They sold their apartments by deception, executed legal documents, and kicked the unfortunate people from their homes. The first time Sergei made such a terrible, dirty deal, he was shaking all over with guilt, but lack of money and a thirst for a better life for his family took precedence over his conscience. Everything went like clockwork, if not for one incident, after which Sergei's life began to crumble like a house of cards. He came to another pensioner, his potential victim. She was his schoolteacher. He realized he didn't want to take her apartment. He couldn't do that. Boss, please don't touch this apartment, he asked. I cannot. It's already in business. If you need this apartment, pay our share of the profits from its sale. Sergei did that. He went into debt, taking almost two million from his colleagues and giving it to his boss. It all was in vain. 
The agency sold the old lady's apartment anyway. Boss, does that mean I don't have to give any more money, since you've made a profit from selling this apartment? Sergei asked. No, you have to. That's our moral damage. You signed a document that you undertake to return everything. So return every penny. The boss answered without batting an eye. From that moment on, Sergei's torment began. The borrowed money turned out to be too much for him. He didn't know what to do. Creditors made constant threats. When verbal threats were not enough, they beat Sergei heavily. Then, they threatened Alice with physical violence. Sergei found no way out but to send his girlfriend to his parents' home. Tears welled up in his eyes when the taxi arrived. Sergei didn't know whether he would ever see his beloved or not. The main thing was she would be safe. Sergei's parents' house was standing on a picturesque riverbank. Beautiful and spacious, it exuded kindness and comfort. Anna Vasilyevna and Yuri Nikolaevich accepted Alisa as their daughter. Sergei said a lot of good things about you, but you exceeded all our expectations. The owners did not stop praising her. On the very first night, Alice felt an attack of nausea, a lump rolling up to her throat, and barely made it to the toilet. While still in the city, she felt something was wrong with her body. However, she thought it was fatigue and constant worry. At that moment, she was sure it was. Pregnancy. How happy Sergei would be if he knew that. But alas, he forbade them to contact him. He rarely wrote only short SMS. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'll be there soon. I'll be there soon. Who would have thought the soon would happen after three years? Mom, when will our dad arrive? Little Anne, a smiling girl with dimples, asked her mother. She was almost a copy of her father. Soon, my baby, soon, Alice answered, hoping she was right. She thanked life for such wonderful people as Anna Vasilyevna and Yuri Nikolaevich, who supported her in difficult times. They didn't leave the baby from her first days of life. Her first step, first tooth, first word. It all went through their loving hearts and kind hands. Little Anne grew up a curious girl, and like a sponge, quickly absorbed new knowledge. Alice could even teach her how to dial the police or ambulance on her mobile phone in an emergency. After what happened with Sergei, she was afraid something terrible could happen. But most of all, Anne loved it when Alice sang for her. The little girl listened to every word, and even sang along as best she could. Mom, I will sing for you soon when you cannot get up, Anne said once. Why cannot I get up? Alice was surprised. Well, maybe you'll get to red and go to bed to rest, the girl unexpectedly said in an adult way. That morning, Alice woke up early with a strange premonition. Something had to happen today. Her intuition did not deceive her. After a while, Alice heard Anna Vasilyevna's piercing scream downstairs on the first floor. She was shouting as if she had seen a ghost. However, it wasn't a ghost. It was Sergei. He suddenly arrived without warning three years later. Anna Vasilyevna and Yuri Nikolaevich threw themselves on their son's neck, crying and hugging him as if he had come from the war. And then Alice, followed by a little girl, came down from the second floor. Dad, Dad, the girl screamed and extended her small hands towards the man. Sergei could not hold back his tears. He fell to his knees in front of Alice and asked for forgiveness. Darling, I'm sorry I haven't been around for so long. Not a day has passed that I haven't thought about you. Finally, I have solved all the problems, and we can all return to the city together. And then, he picked little Anne up in his arms and spun her around. The little girl laughed merrily. Alice caught her breath from the rush of feelings. She buried herself in Sergei's shoulder, felt the painfully familiar warmth of his hands, and realized he was still her love and happiness. She could not imagine her future without him and her daughter. The very next day, the whole family returned home, despite the persistent requests of Sergei's parents to stay with them. We have such a big house, and you have a small apartment, Anna Vasilyevna lamented. Don't worry, mom, we'll also have comfortable housing. Just give me time, Sergei reassured her. Without delaying the matter, Sergei and Alice married. They invited only their dearest people to the registry office, Sergei's parents and Alice's grandmother. Life began to get better. Sergei got a new job. Alice went back to college. Little Anne started going to kindergarten. Mom, mom, there's some envelope lying by the door, Anne said when they got ready to go to kindergarten in the morning. Show me, my dear. Alice took the envelope. Inside was a piece of paper with the inscription, Return the money, otherwise you will regret it. 
Alice felt as if she had received an electric shock. Her hands began to shake. Mom, what's wrong with you? Anna asked. Everything is okay, my dear, Alice reassured her. Although, how could it be okay? In the evening, she would give the envelope to Sergei and wouldn't leave him until he told her everything. Evening came. Alice was preparing dinner as usual. Suddenly the doorbell rang. Already opening the door, she realized she was making a mistake. Sergei always opened it with his key. But it was too late. Two masked men burst into the apartment and pushed Alice against the wall. Where is the money? Answer me. You think the boss is gone? So there's no need to return anything. It will not work. One of the unknown people shouted, shaking a pistol in front of Alice's face. I don't know. My husband didn't tell me anything. Alice said, scared. She was worried not about herself, but about the baby. Little Anne was looking at her with her eyes wide open, and did not understand what was happening. The second guy started rummaging through the closets, trying to find something valuable. He came across a jewelry box, and poured the contents into his pocket. The jewelry was a gift from Sergei, so it was priceless for Alice. Don't touch it! Don't you dare take it! At that very moment, the guy pushed Alice with all his might. She remembered a severe blow against something hard, and that was it. She fell into the darkness. It looks like she's dead, one of the strangers said. Come on, let's get out of here. That phrase was the last that Alice vaguely heard, losing consciousness. That was where her memories ended. She woke up in a hospital bed and was going crazy about what could have happened to her daughter. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. The doctor Nikolai Ivanovich entered the ward. Alice, this detective is coming to see you. Can you talk? He asked. Yes, of course, yes. Alice screamed. She was happy to learn that Anne was fine. The police were amazed by the courage and intelligence of the little girl. That didn't happen often. She called the police from the mobile phone and tried to explain in a thin, childish voice what had happened. Some men hit my mom. She fell. And she fell asleep. Can you wake up my mom? She could even say the name of the street, and the police themselves figured out the number of the house and apartment. When the police arrived at the scene, the officers couldn't believe their eyes and froze for a moment, watching the child. A young woman was lying motionless on the floor. The girl sat next to her, gently stroking her hand and singing. She sang so eloquently that even the police could hardly hold back their tears. My mom will rest and wake up, the girl said. Yes, baby, of course, one of the police officers replied. How nice she is. If it weren't for her, you might not be alive, the detective said. Where is she now? Alice asked worriedly. In the country house of your husband's parents. Thank God she's okay, the detective replied. And Sergei? Alice was horrified to know what a terrible story her husband had gotten into. How many troubles he had done for the dream of a better life. He is now under investigation, giving evidence. We caught a gang of scammers working as real estate agents. I cannot say what the punishment will be, but his sincere confession will play a role, the detective said. A month later, Alice came to Sergei's parents. Fresh country air, her daughter's love, and the wonderful married couple could help her recover quickly. And they continued to wait for Sergei, no matter how long it would take. If you sincerely repent, God forgives sins, and love and fidelity work miracles. Thank you for watching. Please support us with a like and subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you liked about the story. See you later.